welcome to another episode of Masonic Curious. Today, as well as being in Warren, Massachusetts, we have a special guest here today who has bought some unbelievable items from a lodge that no longer exists. Now, decades ago when I did the Facebook account for the Cambridge Masonic Temple, uh, a couple of times a year I did a tour of the Masonic buildings here in Massachusetts and put photographs with a little bit of information about each building. And as time went on, I came across a Masonic building that I couldn't believe where she was located at. And as I did more research, I got more intrigued on the old girl. So I'm going to turn it over to our brother, who is going to tell you all about the only Masonic building in the state of Massachusetts, which resides under one. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Ryan Maslach. I am from Eden Lodge in Ware, Massachusetts. And I'm here to talk with Masonic curators today about Bethel Lodge of Enfield, Massachusetts. Uh, one of the four towns that was flooded by the Quaggan Reservoir in 1939. Here I've got a photograph of Bethel Lodge in downtown Enfield, Massachusetts. In the 1820s, before the anti-Masonic period, many lodges were springing up in Western Massachusetts. In 1824, Eden Lodge of Ware came into existence. In 1825, there were two lodges, Bethel Lodge of Enfield, Mass, and Carmel Lodge, which was here in the town of Warner. Bethel Lodge had its existence from 1825 until 1939, when the state of Massachusetts disincorporated four towns for the use of flooding them for a public water supply for the Boston metropolitan uh, area. Uh, I do have some artifacts to show you that I have brought from this lodge. The first being the original set of bylaws and minutes of the lodge. And as you see, it has some, the square encompasses on the front cover. And it also has beautiful copper plate script in it that says Bethel Lodge, Volume 1. Eden Lodge is lucky enough to have the complete set of Bethel Lodge records as Bethel Lodge ended up merging with Eden in 1939. I have some interest, interesting facts taken from the records in the minutes of Bethel Lodge. Their first meeting was in the hall of Brother Jonah Gross. Within subsequent meetings, three brothers sold their building, their store, to Bethel Lodge in downtown Massachusetts. Aaron Woods, Leonard Woods, and Josiah B. Woods. And I've actually got the deed to the lodge as well. The lodge had voted to adopt the exact same bylaws as Mount Vernon Lodge in Belchertown, chartered in 1809. The brothers opened on each degree in masonry and closed on each degree at each one of their meetings. The first minutes show that as soon as they were chartered, they had candidates coming in to take the degree, so they started off running. When they had opened the lodge and listed the, in the minutes the officers present, it was not worshipful master, senior warden, junior warden. They had said right worshipful master, worshipful senior warden, worshipful junior warden in those days. The lodge had a fruitful existence until about 1830, when the anti-Masonic times came after the death of William Morgan. And the lodge had voted to send its charter back to Grand Lodge and cease its operations. However, the lodge building still belonged to the Masons, although vacant. And during the anti-Masonic times, their lodge was broken into, their jewels stolen, their building vandalized, but fortunately, the records were saved. It wasn't until 1858 when John T. Hurd received a petition from several of those original members of Bethel Lodge to get their charter back. And here I've got the original 1825 charter of Bethel Lodge with a notation on the back from John T. Hurd that the lodge had come into existence again. The charter itself, like I said, was given in 1825, signed by John Abbott. And on the back, returned 
by John T. Hurd, signed by him and Charles W. Moore, Grand Secretary at the time. As this lodge was rechartered, it also had a fruitful existence. The towns of the Quabbin, consisting of Enfield, Dana, Prescott, and Greenwich, was the immediate drawing pool and com comprised members of that lodge from those towns. In the late 1800s, Boston began to look for alternative method methods of getting water supply, as what they had immediately surrounding the city was not enough as the city of Boston was going through a population boom. The government of the state had created the Metropolitan District Water Supply Commission, which was given instruction to look throughout the state to see where they could use for a reservoir. They had looked up in Rutland, they had looked up in the Merrimack Valley, Haverhill area, but they had saw the Swift River Valley comprised of four very small towns, not really giving much in terms of money. They were agricultural farming communities. And the state sent a delegation out there. And in 1927, their fate was sealed as those towns were going to be disincorporated, uh, have the buildings raised and the valley flooded. The two architects who were entrusted with constructing this reservoir was Frank Windsor and Xenophilius Goodendall. Each of the dams at the Quabbin are named after them. In 1938, the four towns were disincorporated fully and the process began of raising all of the buildings, either burning them, some of them were removed board by board and constructed elsewhere. There is a building at Mount Holyoke College that I believe was from the town of Prescott. So several of those buildings were able to be saved and moved, but several were burnt and raised to the ground. The foundations of which, the stone foundations, are still there. Also, the, some, the about nine or ten cemeteries in that area had to be cleared out, so they had to disinter about 7,500 deceased people and their tombs and remove them to Quabbin Park Cemetery, which was land bought by the state for that purpose. When they were rearranged at Quabbin Park Cemetery, they were not arranged in any type of order as they were by cemetery, but rather just this, this mass sea of, of old graves that had to be moved. The process of disincorporating the towns and forcing people out of their homes generated a very strong distaste for the government and for Boston, which still exists today. Several elderly people now living came from those towns or could remember when they existed. And it was very difficult because many men and families had their farms, their homes, their businesses there. And when the state had, in 1927, condemned those towns, they had to begin the process of figuring out what they were gonna do, where they were gonna move. Um, the state did buy land from, land and property from the inhabitants of those towns but they received a pittance because it was going to be destroyed and flooded anyway. So their options were not very, were very great. You could take the small amount the state was giving you or you could refuse it and be kicked out anyway. So it was a very difficult thing. In 1939, at a meeting at Eden Lodge in Ware, the Grand Master at the time, Joseph Earl Perry, originally raised at Mountain Lodge in Shelburne Falls, came out to officially merge the two lodges. And it was the first time, I think about at least 80 or 100 years that lodges had merged because it was such a unique situation. And the membership of Bethel Lodge had transferred to Eden. Because the inhabitants of those towns were so displaced, many of them went to Springfield, many of them went to Worcester, to Greenfield, or the surrounding towns around this Swift River Valley. Several brethren, from Enfield had affiliated and became members at Day Spring Lodge in Munson. One of them had brought the Tyler Sword of Bethel Lodge with him. And Day Spring, now Thomas Day Spring Lodge, has this sword on a plaque with some information about it. And it's a beautiful Tyler Sword that has its sheath with the all-seeing eye 
the letter G, two columns, and the great lights, and on the hilt of the sword, or rather on, on the blade of the sword, it says Bethel Lodge AFAM, and on the other side it says Enfield Mass. So these treasures that we have from Bethel Lodge, we are lucky to have them and are very happy to show them with Masonic curators. The last artifact I have today is the original seal from Bethel Lodge. This seal hasn't been used in over 80 years in, a official, in, a, in an official capacity as a lodge would do. So as I've given this talk to several lodges throughout the state of Massachusetts, I asked the brothers to bring their Masonic passports so that I can stamp their passports with the seal so they could have a little treasure and so that uh, the talk I've given in Bethel Lodge will be remembered. And I thank you for taking the time to, to listen about Bethel Lodge and Enfield Mass.